sound of music. The musical duo of Richard Rodgers and Oscar Hammerstein II reformed and forever altered the face of musical theater. They created a virtual monopoly on Broadway with success after success. Some 60 years later, their works continue to entertain audiences and their story continues to inspire. Richard Rogers was born on June 28, 1902, in his family summer home right here on Long Island. The Rogers family later moved to Manhattan, where at the young age of four, Richard began picking out fragments of melodies on the family piano with only two fingers. By six years old, he was playing the piano fluently, but it was all by ear. For Rogers, formal piano lessons would never work. By the age of 12, he was spending hours a day inside of the piano. At age 14, Rogers would use all his allowance to see Saturday matinees. He loved the theater. That same year, his older brother Mortimer brought him to see a varsity show at his college, Columbia University. Afterwards, he took Richard backstage to meet one of the actors who was also a co-author. His name was Oscar Hammerstein II. This was the first meeting between Rogers and Hammerstein. Hammerstein's warmth and talent would leave a lasting impression on the boy who would someday be his partner. Oscar Greenling Clendenning Hammerstein II was born on July 12, 1895 into a family already immersed in show business. His grandfather was a prominent opera producer, his uncle was a Broadway producer, and his father was a manager of a vaudeville theater, the Victoria, in Manhattan. Most of Oscar's family was famous in their own right, but Oscar would eventually overshadow them all. Oscar, or Oki, as he was known by friends, was involved in various theatrical activities during his youth. At nine, he began piano lessons. Sadly, his mother died when he was just 15. As he got older, his father pushed Oscar away from the theater and towards law. And so he attended Columbia University and went on to Columbia Law School. But when his father died in 1914, the rest of his family helped him return to his true calling, theater. Back at Columbia, Oscar's career really began. He acted in varsity productions and participated in them for many years. It is there that Oscar Hammerstein became a writer and an actor. But it would be years before Rodgers and Hammerstein collaborated on their first musical. First, they would become successful with other partners. For dinner at eight. For Rodgers, that partner was a student he met at Columbia University, Lorenz Hart, known as Larry. This prolific partnership began in 1925 with their breakthrough charity show called The Garrick Gaieties. Soon their musical comedies were being performed on Broadway and London's West End. When they were at the top of their game, they averaged four new shows a year and even spent time in Hollywood where they wrote songs and scores for several musical movies. Oscar Hammerstein made his early mark in theater by collaborating with Jerome Kern. After several hits, Hammerstein and Kern adapted a novel about a Mississippi riverboat and called it Showboat. The musical became one of the most influential works in American theater and firmly established Hammerstein in the musical world. By the early 1940s, Rogers became concerned about Larry Hart's declining health due to alcoholism and wrestled with creating a new partnership with Oscar Hammerstein. Larry was slipping very fast and I had responsibilities and as much as I regretted it, there was nothing I could do. I couldn't stop working myself because Larry couldn't be worked with. I had tremendous faith in Oscar. Oscar had had a bad time of it for many years, but I knew beyond argument about this enormous talent. And I felt that if something did happen to Larry, this was the logical direction for me to move in. Incredibly, their first collaboration forever changed the way musicals were created. Oklahoma, where the wind comes sweeping down the plain. Oklahoma the was the first musical that was not a comedy, but rather tackled serious relationship issues. Right it confronted the problems of love between two people. Set during the turn of the century, 
the infectious lyrics from the opening number declared that the new century was America's and that everything would go America's way. Oh, what a beautiful morning. Oh, what a beautiful day. I got a beautiful feeling. Everything's going my way. Oklahoma was not only notable for its innovative plot, but also for its music. Notice the accented, upward-rushing bass octaves that lead into the title song, Oklahoma. <laughs> then it immediately retreats. Oklahoma, where the wind comes In the song, down. Many a New Day, Rogers completely removed the normal counter-melody of musical composition. Many a new face will please my eye. Many a new love will find me. These and other innovations revolutionized musical theater. Over the romance behind me, many a new day will dawn before I do. But it was hard work, as Rogers explained in this audio interview. The easy approach to this is to say, oh, look, Oscar handed him a lyric, and out came the tune in five minutes. Well, the tune didn't come out in five minutes. We had gone through months of discussion about the play. We knew a great deal about the situation in which the particular song occurred. We had reached a mutual decision as to the time signature so that it would fit in with the song before and the song after. All these things condition the actual composing. And you carry this around with you subconsciously and consciously very often for a great length of time and finally you reach the moment of composition, and it comes in a rush. Soon, Rodgers and Hammerstein's songwriting partnership would become permanent, generating an incredible body of works that would dominate theater and become some of the most memorable films in history. June is busting out all over. Carousel was named one of the best musicals in the 20th century by Time magazine, and it was one of the first musicals to contain a tragic plot. South Pacific. We got sunlight on the sand, we got moonlight on the sea. Set during World War II, this heart-wrenching musical explored racial prejudices and promised a generation of Americans that they could fall in love at first sight. We ain't got days. The King and I. Getting to know you, getting to know all about you. A charming musical about the tempestuous but enchanting relationship that develops when a strong-willed English school teacher becomes the tutor for the children of the King of Siam. You are a very difficult woman. Perhaps so, Your Majesty. But you'll observe care that head shall never be higher than mine. When I shall sit, you shall sit. When I shall kneel, you shall kneel. Etc. 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 Do a dear. Perhaps the most recognizable Rodgers and Hammerstein musical of all is The Sound of Music. Brown paper packages tied up with strings. These are a few of my favorite things. Set in Austria during World War II, the famous love story would be the duo's final collaboration before Oscar died of cancer in 1966. Collectively, Rodgers and Hammerstein earned 34 Tonys, 15 Academy Awards, two Pulitzer Prizes, two Grammys, and two Emmys. The songwriters became international celebrities and even appeared as the mystery guests on the popular 1950s game show, What's My Line? Are you, in any sense, comedians? Ah, uh, 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 that's, uh, no, that's three down and seven to go, Mr. Sir. Mm. I think I recognize those errs and ahs. They're two old friends of mine who have a monopoly on the musical comedy business in America. Is that fairly correct? Well, I would say this, that I think it would be completely fair to say that our guests do have a relationship to the musical comedy field and that they have achieved some measure of success. Yes, Miss Francis? Well, the first names that come to my mind are Rogers and Hammerstein. <laughs> 
Some 60 years later, Rodgers and Hammerstein musicals are frequently revived. South Pacific has been running on Broadway for two years and still draws box office crowds. Many of their songs are still being used in all parts of American culture. This television commercial ran just last week. Rodgers and Hammerstein were arguably the most famed and talented musical duo of all time. Together, they developed a monopoly, not just on Broadway, but on all of musical theater. So long, farewell, our readers in adieu, 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 to you and you and you. There is no doubt that their poignant lyrics and inspiring music will live on forever. Bye.